next question yeah so what is the name of the splint what are its uses and what are the use of the pulleys 1 and 2 which have been marked dr ankit uh, sir ball brown splint hello yes, yes sir hello what yes. are the uses uh sir uh, name is baller brown spring a uh, pulley one is for uh, when you are applying for uh, lower tibial skeletal traction what, uh, what are the what are the uses and kit question sir, part 2 uh, part 2 uh, for we, we can give uh, skeletal traction in case of fracture shaft of femur or uh, in lower limb fractures uh, like shaft, shaft of femur fracture and uh, tibial uh, up in charter fractures anything Hello? else lower femoral very when, normally when then for any uh, for hip dislocations we can give uh, so in modern you know you have you seen you know putting people now in uh, distal tibial and uh, you know calcaneal and uh, all distal femur traction nowadays have you seen in your practice nowadays in in private setup you know all our dnb no sir no so baller blown splint for what purpose it is used in uh, uh, in uh, in near hospital do they use it now or they don't, they don't use it uh, we uh... we can also use for giving limb elevation limb elevation yeah so nowadays it is very commonly used to for limb elevation to reduce the swelling that is one common use so it can be used for any lower limb fractures like femur fracture tibia fractures for calcaneal fractures for you know for limb elevation especially in pots fracture and uh, calcaneal fracture to keep it above okay what uh, now you tell us what are the uses of pulley 1 and 2 uh, pulley 1 uh, when we are applying uh, calcaneal traction and lower tibial traction uh, pulley 2 uh, when we are giving upper tibial skeletal traction for distal femur what do, which one you give uh, which one also uh, number 2 mm-hmm. there any number 3 Uh, that uh, uh, yes, there is number three. Sir, we think we can give uh, to avoid uh, food drop. So how do you apply that? Uh, that time. Because we have one session is a ward round session. Is there? Which mm-hmm. session? for husband edition monena and over the next boyfriend generation can you please mute hello yeah tell me ankit how will you put uh, your uh, you know the how will you use the pulley number 3 uh, sorry sir anybody to take anyone in the group to take it pulley number 3 in this one baller brown spleen or bb spleen what is the use of pulley number 3 akil from uh, to prevent food drop to prevent yeah. food drop. how will you apply it uh, from time right, from big toe to the pulley dicto sanil so on the doors of the food applying straight upwards and how will you apply that trying to In 90 degree uh, in the outer position. Uh, 
how will you apply uh, either you, you, like can, that, uh, you can if this is the foot you can tie around uh, this one so usually what they do is that you tie a cloth around the uh, toes at the you know mcp joint level then connect it through the rope and the weight yes sir that is a you tie a small uh, towel kind of a thing you make a small bandage kind of a thing here that you keep it here tie it uh, and take it around and uh, put it so that is how you cannot uh, directly apply uh, the you know tie on to the foot it will cause uh, you know pressure sore so what they use it they will put a bandage so uh, <laughs> then tie it on to that okay next yeah this one so the last slide uh, divya last slide yeah so this is the uh, uses so you should know all the number number 1 number 2 number 3 what is it used for this can be asked both in oski and uh, also for ward rounds so one more okay some people can another thing in ward rounds uh, people can ask me how will you prepare this border bone spin anybody can answer how will you prepare it sometimes you know my professor used to do that in you know? border mm -hmm. bone spin will be lying there like this frame will be there frame is lying there how will you prepare you have to apply cotton and bandage and uh, bind it around that frame what so will you do uh uh winding a bandage cotton bandage around that uh that frame for keeping the leg and to avoid the sore the uh, back pressure sore below have, the heel have anybody seen a triangular bandage sir triangular bandage have you anybody mm -hmm. seen no sir no in our time people used to give it after hydrocele surgery triangular bandage in Hello. surgical department the phone on the triangular bandage you say that's a cotton a cotton a square sheet of cotton you fold it to make like a triangle hmm. so that you apply over this area so that you know it will be hanging after that only you will apply cotton so that your your calf muscles you no know, calf muscle will be taking that if you are putting a cotton bandage the problem is that it won't it won't be able to accommodate the calf muscle the calf muscle because of the weight of the calf muscle it should, you know it should be sagging like that hmm. so calf muscle should be sagging no like this so you apply a triangular bandage there and further down you apply there so initial if you look at the you know proximal part of the polar brown splint that area you apply a triangular bandage and to the, towards the distal part you apply the uh, cotton bandage you understood why that is to uh, uh, to take care of the uh, calf muscle same thing when you are uh, preparing your uh, uh, thomas splint also you apply the triangular bandage initially initial you know proximal one third part so that this and their thigh muscles can be accommodated there whereas you are just putting the bandage alone it will be a problem how will you measure a thomas splint thomas splint uh, from the groin area to the heel uh, you have to take the length and add to that about 15 to 20 cm so to accommodate the flexion of the foot and the flexion of the foot Yes. Now, what is the size of this uh, of uh, of the thomas splint? Proximal uh, groin area measure the circumference, and that have to be equal with the inner diameter of that proximal ring. 
Yeah, you should be, when you are putting your, both the hands should be easily going towards the either side of your ring. They are not a bag in the duty bag. What is the use of W at the end of Thomas Blum? To accommodate that greater trochander. No, no, that is, you have to give a 15 degree tilt in the proximal part. Oh. 15 degree tilt, that is to accommodate the greater trochander. Oh. Towards the distal end, there is a W. Oh, yes, sir. What is the use? Yes. We, Denju, Denju wants to say something. Denju, why you want to have a W at the distal end of uh, Thomas Wayne? Yes. Uh, Can you identify we, who is we? Sure. Surek. Sir Surek. Surek, Surek. Okay. Yeah, Surek, you yeah, are uh, telling something. Yeah, to prevent the slippage of the note when you are giving the uh, uh, static traction, bug traction. Yeah, it is It is for putting the static traction to tie the knot there so that it will slip. So, Thomas Blind is, what is the use of Thomas Blind? Sir, uh, for temporary stabilization of uh, uh, femoral fractures. Temporary stabilization. For, for transportation of the yes. patient with the femoral fractures. Yes, it is for the transportation of especially femoral fractures. So what actually was Thomas Quinn invented? Okay, uh, those who are speaking, please unmute. Ankit, can you tell me for what was this uh, Thomas Splint invented? Uh, in, uh, for uh, TB knee, uh, for yes. the mobilization. TB knee. When was this Thomas Splint become very famous? World War time. Which World War? Second World War. No, First World War. Second World for First World War, it became very famous for transporting the femur fracture. Second World War, what happened? Something in femur was invented. Again, First World War, it was Thomas Splint, which was used for transportation. Indeed. And it was also used for treating femur fracture. So Second World War, it was the K-nail. Yes, which was correct. The... So, a lot of, you know, this uh, British soldiers who was injured, those came back, had something in their femur. That was k -nail from Germany. They got it. So uh, that was the Second World War. We had the k -nail. So we had uh, internal fixation in Second World War. And First World War, we had only immobilization, you know, splinting. Who was Tom, this Thomas? Vijit, Vijit, who was Thomas? You, who Thomas? Denju, Denju, who was Thomas? Uh, Dr. Thomas Owen, who studied on uh, on TB, TB the knee. Name of, full name of Thomas? Thomas Owen, O W E N. Is there you, anything more you, you want to add? You go on, Thomas. Who go on? You go on, Thomas or H O Thomas. Okay. Mm. So who was he? Father of orthopedics. Yes, he's considered as the father of orthopedics. So, 
What are the things you know about Thomas? Thomas test. What is Thomas test? Thomas wrench. Yes. Thomas Klein. No, he studied. Do you know the famous nephew of Thomas? Who was more famous than Thomas actually? Robert Jones. Robert Jones. Robert Jones. Correct. Robert Jones. So he was more famous. He was the nephew of Thomas. Actually, uh, he was the successor of Thomas. So the John's fracture, John's splinting, all uh, John's bandage, all was uh, by this uh, Robert Jones. Okay, next slide. Uh, next question. Name the traction which is being shown. What are the indications for this? What is the maximum weight we can use for this traction? And what are the complications of this? Who is one plus eight? One plus eight. Somebody's name is one plus eight here. So, can you answer, Doctor? One plus eight. He has disappeared. Doctor Varsha. Doctor Varsha. I think she also ran off. I cannot see Doctor Varsha. Varsha is there. Right? Okay, Varsha is there. I don't, I don't know. Ah, Doctor Varsha Nambiar. Uh, yes, what is this? Any idea? They are all busy, I think, operating. Just logged in. Agil. Alter traction. Alter traction. Alter traction. Okay. Mm. Okay. What are the indications? C-spine fractures, dislocation. No. C-spine fractures. C-spine fractures and dislocations. You give this. In this C-spine disc problem. Yeah. What else? Weight ten percent. 10% of body weight. Yeah, 10 to 16%. Okay. What are the complications? What could be the complication that can occur if you continue this traction for long duration? Mandible. Mandible. Pressure on mandible. mandible. Pressure on mandible. So what will happen? Mandible dislocation. Dislocation. Because the pressure, what can happen? Pressure, pressure source can happen. Oh. What is the you said about uh, fractures? So, can this traction be very useful in the case of a fracture, cervical spine fractures, and all? Or what, what other traction do you know of when there is a cervical spine yeah, fracture? Hello, hello, traction. Hello, traction. So what is it actually? Is it halo or is it some other thing? Halo traction is different. What is the green green peel well traction which which we use for a uh, what are the indications for a skull traction? We commonly call it the skull traction. So what are the indications? Undis undisplaced. 
Understood. C one C two five. Hangman's. Some not all hangman's actually, but some maybe you can use it. Then. Face the dislocations. Okay, so what 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 is what is the weight which can be applied? For this, you can apply only ten to fifteen percent of the body weight. But for the skull fraction, you can apply more weight. What is the how much weight can you apply? How do we decide? We will increase the weight serially and put the CM and see if it is reduced. Okay. Yeah. How much how much weight you can increase serially? Depending on the level of the fracture, cervical spine fracture, you can. हैंगमैन स्ट्रक्चर C2 factor. Hmm. What under dislocation? What under process of the C2? Hmm. What is the classification name? D alone. Huh? Anybody? Hangman classification just now finished theory now. Fernandez and D alone. Not Fernandez. Levin. Levin. Levin Edwards. Levin Edwards. Levin Edwards. Okay. Uh, how do we apply skull traction? What is the procedure? Do have uh, have you seen or have you have anybody seen that applying a skull traction? The temporal bone. Yeah, yeah. How do we do under local anesthesia? Can do. No, we have to give the DA. Yeah. उटरीट I yeah, think you should read that. How? Uh, what is the procedure? How do you? Uh, I mean, you should only break the outer, outer, outer table. table. Yeah, yeah, outer table. Yeah. Mm. It's like an uh, that X, X, the Crutchfield tongs is like a X shaped device. So you can tighten on the other side so that it will fall down tightly on the skull, and then you pull it and see how much whether it is uh, holding stably on the skull. And then you apply traction. Okay. Can you move on to the next next question now? So, what is the implant shown? What are the indications for its use? What is the length of a standard barrel? What is the use of a triple rimmer, and why is it called a triple rimmer? Doctor Ebin is there. Doctor Ebin. Yes, sir. There is a dynamic shift screw. Length of the standard barrel. We cannot hear. Dynamic hip screw, sir. Okay. Indication is a uh, intertrochanteric fracture. Then. A uh, standard length of. Uh, what are the indications? So not what is the indication. So what are fractures? Then. Uh, neck of femur fracture okay very good then 
Ribbon, I think you have muted again. Yeah, yourself. Unmute. Stop talking. HSN be again used for any proximal uh, femur, you know, um, tumor surgeries. You know, when if you get if you have a meds coming in there, you want to, you know, you want to. Uh, instead of tumor spreading, we can use DHS there. Okay. So one is trochanteric fracture, one is neck of femur, and any proximal femur, uh, you know, lytic lesions where you want to bypass that area. If, if you nail it, then you have to radiate the entire femur. No? So if you can just, if you want to isolate that region, you can use a DHS. Okay, what is the length of the standard bar? I'm not sure. Okay. Anybody know? Who is uh, Nia? So, Nisaj. Nisaj. Gauda. 85 mm. Long barrel. Hello. You've got two barrels, no long barrel and short barrel. Short barrel, short barrel yes. So, long we have barrel. To take the exam going. Na. Sureg, na. Sureg. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Tell me what what is the length of the long barrel and what is the length of short barrel? The long barrel is eighty five. Eighty five um, centimeters. Mm. Eighty five millimeter. Uh, uh. Okay. Yes. Anybody has got difference in opinion? Evan, what do you say? Will Those you take it? Evan, will you take it? 85 mm -hmm. millimeter for long barrel. Para, para, para. Short barrel is 85, long barrel is 95. Nisaj is here? Nisaj. Nisaj. Yes. Sugesh has put your name that you are exam going. Nisaj Gautam and Sureg. So you have to answer this. Nisaj. 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 Okay. The so standard barrel is 38 mm and mm -hmm. short barrel is 25 mm. 25 mm. Do you know something similar to uh, this? Uh, uh, the pro what is the angle of this? Uh, this one. One thirty-five. It's a fixed angle, no? One thirty-five. One thirty-five. Do you know uh, another type of similar thing which you can vary the angle? What is the name of that particular plate? There is a screw here. I don't know whether my screen is not shown. No? Just below the barrel uh, where the screw goes, the sliding screw goes, there is a screw. You just turn it, you can change the angle. Hmm. Yes, Femoral neck system. And it's very old. Right? By, uh, my PG time, we have uh, uh, used it. Variable angle. On this newer, not variable the newer angle. IOT. Yeah. Variable angle, DHS. Yeah, <laughs> what is the name of it? Okay. Dynamic. Yes, Shamas. DCS. No, 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 you don't say DCS. Yeah. DCS what is the indication of DCS? Subprochantic fractures. What? Subprochantic fractures. Okay, then. Distal. 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 
Okay. Otherwise, we will go to Akhil now. Tell me, da, what is the use of triple ring mark, and why is it called triple ring? It separate separate the rings for the screw and the barrel. It has different for diameter to ring the. So the triple, no. You told separately rings for the screw, the barrel, and the third one. Three. Triple means three. No, what is the third one? Uh, the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> what is the mouth to, actually uh, to mouth to gaudam yeah so to break open the cortex so yeah, what is the mouth mouth you know what you told is mouth what what comes in the mouth the barrel and the plate area so. yeah it is a so barrel the plate junction yeah so it dreams for the screw the barrel and for the barrel plate junction so that's why is it called triple dream <clears throat> okay next slide divya So what is the orthosis which is shown here? What is the principle, and what are the indications for this? Who is writing exam from uh, Rajagiri and Kit? And Kit who? Who is who is writing the exam this time from Rajagiri? Uh, sir, Renju, Arun. Renju, Renjit, Renjit, but I think they are not in. Not okay. From medical center, medical EMC. Sadish Arun. Who is there? Sadish Arun, sir. Sadish. Sadish, I am not there. Join J Arun. I am not there. Not there. Not there. Okay. We are listening now. ജിംഷാദ് <laughs> 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 Dimshar, can you answer? Anybody who want to take Bivin Lal? He has shown his video. Bivin, what is this? Unmute yourself. And uh, this is Dearless Soul Race. Yes. ഇമോബിലൈസേഷൻ 
Kyphosis. How do you determine the stability of thoracostomy thoraco thoracic thoracolumbar spine fracture? Punjabi weight. Punjabi. Two col two column or three column principle. Yeah, what is that classification called? Dennis class. Dennis, yeah. More than more than two more columns in volume. Two two or more columns are involved. Among the three, it is unstable. Yeah. So only for and only for stable fractures you can use this. What is the principle? Keep the thoracic spine hyper extended position. Yeah. How do you do that? What is the principle called? The one which we use in uh, intramural kneeling. Three point. Three point. Three point. Three point fixation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. What are the indications for uh, non-operative management in thoracolumbar fractures? When do we stable? Stable. I mean, I, I asked about uh, surgical surgical treatment. Okay. So what are the indications? Patient comes with a thoracic detail fracture. So, what do you look for? Neurological status. Body height. Yeah, yeah, neurological status. Yeah. If there is a neurological yeah. that is definitely. Okay. Uh, if there is no neurological difference, even then, is there any indication? It is like a flexion no, distraction uh, injury. Yeah, one already said like it is unstable. unstable. Yeah. Then yeah. any other indication? Ligament is complex. What what? Sir, uh, the posterior ligament is complex. And the posterior ligament complex? Is that what you said? Sir, uh, I can ask. So, uh, based on the TLX for thoracolumbar injury uh, classification score, we can yeah, yeah, classify right. the uh, based on the uh, type of, uh, I mean, based on the fracture pattern, neurological status, and uh, yeah. stable, uh, there is posterior ligament is complex. Uh, correct, correct. So, uh, sometimes the fracture could be stable, but uh, the patient can, uh, the MRI can uh, make sure. Compromise of the canal, some uh, fragments protruding into the canal. That is also under the patient may not be neurologically, um, neurologically may not be there, but still, that is also an indicator. Okay, uh, we we'll move on to the next question. Then. What is the type of injury? Which are the other investigations which you would like to do? And how will you manage it? Suresh, see here, Suresh. Yes, sir. Today, answer. Yeah. What is the type of injury? Yes. Uh, Shamas want to answer. Supination.
it is the easiest uh, classification in angling fracturing pronation and external rotation in log hands i mean rubber log hands that is a common classification when somebody asks you especially in osti exams it is the easiest log hands that is the common classification you use Webber's classification. Webber's Webber's classification. Yeah. What is Webber's classification? Uh, depending uh, upon the injury from the syndesmotic, whether it's supra, infra, or syndesmotic, A, yeah. B, and C. A, B, and C. So you tell us. It's simple, no? Type of injury. You get the mark, no? You don't have to answer all the complicated things. Simplest. Go by simple. Supination of the loss. Weber, which one? B. Weber, which one? Gaudi? B. C. Yes, correct. B. B. So, it's two o'clock. Two o'clock. So, other investigation? Ah, uh, sir, we will go for the CT. You told it is a. Type C web Weber injury. That is supra syndesmotic injury. So, what other yeah. investigation did you do? Ah, uh, so I will go for the CT scan to look for. You will go, go for the CT scan of which area? Ah, uh, for the anchor. Anchor. And uh, and and. Anybody wants to do a less cheaper investigation to confirm that this is a Weber type C injury? Ah, uh, we can take a. Sir, whole leg X-ray. Uh, Yes. And to look for proximal. Yes, and, correct. Uh, fibula. And take a proximal, proximal fibula X-ray or a knee X-ray. Or I take a hold. More correctly will be what you have told. It's a hold, hold, uh, hold leg X-ray. You have to take for a suprasyndesmotic injury. So what do you suspect in this patient? Missionals. Can I have a fibula? Proximal fibular fracture. Yeah. So you have to. You have to be. You have to look for any neurological deficit. Look for any peroneal nerve injury or something. Like that. So management. What is flex sign? So that is a cheap fracture which we can see. Where? Lisfranc. Lisfranc injuries. Lisfranc. Similarly, Lisfranc injuries. Lisfranc injuries. Lisfranc injuries. Lisfranc injuries. Yeah, similar injury you can see here also. You can get a get a flex sign angle also here. You can get a small fracture in the syndesmotic area. Sometimes, with we can have an avulsion there. Okay, so that is a problem when you are going for the management. If there is an avulsion injury, you are seeing there in between. You have to be careful. Your syndesmotis may not get reduced, so you have to go for a open reduction there of that avulsion. Otherwise, it can get in between the distal. in the spotting area and it will not get reduced so you have to uh, sometimes you have to go for an open or you have to open that area so man management what else how will you manage this patient the first depending upon the skin condition yes. first we have to look the skin condition and if it is a dislocation if it is a anchor dislocation then we have to reduce what do you think if Uh, is dislocated so it is dislocated so we have to relocate dislocated or subluxated or subluxated this is subluxated not dislocated this is subluxated what do you expect for the skin condition so it will be tenting maybe uh, it will break or it may be tenting at the middle side pardon so since it is subluxated So skin may be tenting or there may be a break if it what comes at the later. Look at the this and, X-ray. What do what? There will be blisters. Blisters will can, be there. Can you see soft tissue in the X-ray? Yes, sir. 
Yes. What do you think? Do you think there is a tending? No. 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 I am asking, how will you manage this patient? Do not have to imagine things. You tell me from this X-ray, how will you manage? You are in the casualty, you are attending this patient. So how will you manage? We will uh, try to reduce the joint there and put a above yes. elbow, uh, above knee slab and keep it elevated so to yes. reduce the edema. Yes. Correct. First thing you have to you have to look for any neurological deficit is there. You will look for it. Then you will you have to reduce the joint. That is the most important thing. And give a slab immobilize. You no. Know? So immobilization to relieve the pain and also to prevent further subluxations to get the knee to remain in reduced position and for your <coughs> skin to become silent. What do you expect the same condition in this patient? It can be bad, no? You can have swelling and you can expect to... So further, how will you proceed? We wait for the wrinkle signs and once the wrinkle signs are there, then we can proceed for an open reduction fixation of the syndesmosis. Yeah. Either you have to do a, do a early fixation if there is no much swelling in the initial time or wait for your wrinkle sign to appear. So usually you take up after three to five days once the Swelling starts has to come down. What will you do? Gautam, you told CT. Now, what do you want to see in the CT? Yes, sir, we have to look for the posterior malignant. If there is any involvement. <laughs> can take a lateral view of the angle and see you know, whether there is a posterior malignant. When will you fix a posterior malignant? Right? Twenty-five percent of the articular surface. One third, thirty-three percent. Please, if you have more than twenty-five percent of the size, or you have more than two or three millimeter step, then you have to have to think about a fixation. So you will be definitely seeing it in the uh, in the X-ray, right, in the lateral view. What else you want to see from the CT? Any intraarticular fractures. Pardon? Any intraarticular fractures. We look for any intraarticular fractures. Intraarticular fracture. What intraarticular fracture do you think? Is a CT indicated in this patient? Initially? No. 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 For this patient, so, CT is not indicated. MRI. You want to do an MRI? Okay. For what, what do you want to see in the MRI? Uh, syndesmosis. You are seeing in the X-ray, no? Syndesmotic injury. What else you want to see? Do you think there is no syndesmotic injury? Only the MRI will clinch you the diagnosis of syndesmotic injury in this patient? No, no, X-ray can be a diagnosis. Pardon? X uh, from the X-ray only we can diagnose this. So this what other in information you can get by doing an MRI scan? Ligament of ligament and one is deltoid ligament, whether it is stone, which part of the tone, whether you want to go for a reconstruction of the deltoid ligament, if it is indicated. But generally, you know, like we generally don't do MRI or CT scan in all these injuries. But if you want, if you are saying you should know what, what exactly you are needed. A CT scan is indicated when you suspect there is a, as I have told you, there is a small avulsion fractures in the syndesmotic area. Then you have to do a CT scan to 
if you think you should suspect you can see it in the x ray but if you think it is problematic you you think that you have to go and open that area then you can pre operatively you can plan it by doing a ct because it is a bony avulsion track fragment ct is better mri is indicated to know the deltoid ligament status whether it is torn will from where it is torn if it is from the thalar side or from the medial uh, you know from the medial malleolus area and so that you can plan where you want to put your anchor for repairing so that is a role of uh, ct and mri but generally uh, i don't know in uh, your setup maybe it is taking another thing you might can think is some thalar dome osteochondral fractures but that is also very rare generally don't do okay next slide divi somebody else double. anybody wants to take this double pcl sign double pcl sign will take somebody other than gaudam gaudam and said last one so who else is the exam going here nisaj nisaj yes. is exam going yes 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 so double pcl sign what does it signify It signifies a bucket handle tear of a meniscus. What is the clinical test to check the structure in? So uh, do the McMurray test, uh, and you can assess, uh, look for the joint line tenderness. Okay. This is a typical symptom. Typical symptom will be locking, uh, locking of. Giant. What is true locking? Uh, true locking is. Uh, What are the types of locking? Uh, so the true and pseudo locking is there. Yeah. Tell it's me. Due to the flip, flip of many. Uh, into the joint while walking. First, explain what is true locking and what is pseudo locking. I didn't ask you the cause of true locking and pseudo locking. We'll come to that later. First, explain what is true locking and what is pseudo locking. Um. Yeah. But it's like uh, true locking is anything, uh, any, anything that hinders the uh, movement of the joint. Anything which is intra-articular that causing. Don't be vague. No? You are in two months' time. You are an orthopedic surgeon. And mechanical block on the articular. Hey, Sudeik, what is true locking? Uh, so there is a mechanical block with intra-articular pathology which causes locking. So if there is no mechanical lock, what are the other non-mechanical blocks you know in the knee? That is not the answer. Uh, Sanil, there is Sanil has disappeared. No? <laughs> Sanil, what is true locking? <coughs> Sir, true locking is when intra-articular pathology goes in the uh, locking, such as meniscus tear. Uh, no, no, no. What is true locking, sir? What is true locking? I didn't uh, ask you the cause of true locking. Cannot extend the uh, yes. complete extend the knee. Yeah, true. True locking means you cannot extend the knee. The knee is in slight fixed flexion deformity, and you cannot extend the knee. That is known as true locking. And what is pseudo locking? Pseudo locking patient will have pain uh, due to other causes like tendon tear, bursitis. What, what, like what, what is what is pseudo locking? Tell me. I, there will not be any patient can. Uh, pseudo locking means uh, uh, patient feel like he is uh, due to pain. He, no. He, he may not be able to. No. 
अगर व्हाट इज सोडा लक्ष्मी एक्सटेंशन loose bodies so that is pseudo locking and in true locking you get it in one is in what are the what are the causes of true locking true locking mm-hmm. means you don't have the extension your knee is in slight uh, flexion deformity about 5 to 10 degree and you will not be having extension so that is true locking so what are the causes of true locking and skull tears गौतम बकेट एंड रिटायर बकेट एंड रिटायर यस देन इन दो अनकत वांट्स टू से समथिंग and get what are the other causes of loose bodies no loose bodies produces pseudo locking i told you no. you will not have any motion the knee get locked then you move your you know you wiggle your knee then you get the knee unlocked that is uh, pseudo locking that is in loose body true locking Bivin, Bivin, Lal, I can see only two of you, Ankit and Bivin. Yeah, tell uh, me, Bivin. Uh, yeah, atrofibrosis. Mm, atrofibrosis will produce. Actually, true locking. No, that is it. All these lockings are temporary phenomenon. See, it, it can get lock is always an unlocking phenomenon will be there. No, in atrofibrosis there is no unlocking. टीन <laughs> so that can also produce this uh, uh true locking it can get locked and up it can get go in and out so this all this soft tissue kind of things which can produce this uh, true locking the knee will be in slight uh, flexion and pseudo lockings are seen in loose bodies okay next what is the fixation principle used which are the other two sides which this principle can be used and what is the most important requisite to apply this principle chamas tension ban principle so is it Uh, what is tension what is tension bend principle 
your uh, tensile force will be con converted to compressive force okay name other two sites other than patella where you use मीडियल मलियालोक्सिटीन डू Generally don't do it. One is Jones fracture, base of fifth. So all these avulsion fractures you can do uh, tension bend, uh, tension. But generally you don't do in uh, uh, proximal humerus. Why? In greater tuberosity avulsion. Why? so that is a other third question most important requisite to apply this principle there should be an opposite cortex which should be intact yeah you should have the cortex to be in in intact so usually you know it is a cancellous bone on the top and you will have the greater tuberosity won't be like opposite cortex it will be full of muscle you know, and it will be a flake only So identify the muscle which is being tested. Divya, which nerve? The bear will go through this question. Yeah. Identify the muscle which is being tested. Which nerve supplies this? Name the foot inverters and how will you do a Thomson's test? So which is the muscle being tested there? Yeah, the posterior. Are it? Yeah, it's posterior. Okay, which is the nerve which supplies it? Posterior nerve. Posterior nerve. Okay, name the footy waters. Peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Which is the main? Which is the supporting role? Peroneus brevis is the main, mm -hmm. and peroneus is the support. Okay. And how will you do a Thomson's test? So, in bronchospasm, in flexospasm, and at facing the calf muscle. Can you be a little louder? Ah, uh, patient in bronchospasm, okay. And uh, in flex, in flex to ninety degree, okay. and uh, angle should be five, and use the uh, calf muscle. Uh, We have to look for the plantar flexion of the ankle. Uh, so, you know, the plantar flexion is uh, present. Uh, the Achilles tendon at least, and then it's intact. So it's a tibialis. Whatever you said goes right. So any other test for the tendon Achilles? Umbrian test. Brain one test. Needle or brain test. Okay then. Then there is metal sign. Okay. What is metal sign? <coughs> metal sign again. Patient in prone uh, position, knee flex to ninety degrees. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, if the tendon Achilles is not intact, then the foot will be uh, in a dorsal flex position. Comparing to the other side. Compared to the opposite side. So, which is Simon's test? Any idea? Sorry. 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 I'm not aware of it. Hello. Are you there?
Simon's test is the same as the Thompson's test. It's just the almost same, which the leg is kept hanging loose from the couch rather than bending it and keeping it. Okay. So identify. Okay, next. Which other test? Any 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 other test for tenderness? You know. Mantle sign or test? Any test? Sorry. Yes, sir. Any other test? Sir, no, no, sir. Tender access. Sir. Needle or brain test? I told somebody told no. Only Simon test, needle, needle or brain test. Then uh, you feel a gap. Yes, then uh, uh, Thompson's test. One more thing, if somebody comes in, you ask him to do something which patient will not be able to do. Hand on heels. I don't know the name mm -hmm. of the test here. Hand on heels. Tiptoe walking. Yeah, yeah. Tip you have to make the patient stand on the toes. He will not be able to do that. Okay. Next, next. So, identify the test which is being done. Describe the test for anterior instability and what is hornblower's sign? Who is going to take this? Lift of test. Robert lift of test. Yes. For what? Which must subscribe players? Okay, very good. Describe the test for anterior instability. <laughs> Who is the first year? Any first years in this group? Ms. Anubam, Madam Anubam, can you tell me a test for how to do a test for anterior instability of shoulder? Name a test. Anubam is not answering. Ando. Ando is also muted. Karthik. Karthik. Exam going people will answer in any way. Anybody else? Renju, can you explain? Renju. Karthik. Karthik wants to say something. Karthik. Sir, apprehension test. Apprehension test. How will you do apprehension test? Mm. Sir, uh, uh, patient, uh, the, uh, the elbow is fixed to 90 degree and the patient's shoulder is subjected to 90 degree. And the position uh, of the patient. Oh, the patient is in supine. Supine position. Okay. Uh, the patient's elbow is flexed to 90 degree and the shoulder is abducted. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, gently external rotation forces applied to the shoulder. So one hand. Where will be your other hand? Mm. One hand you are holding here the, at the elbow of the patient. Patient lying supine. You are, you know, elbow at 90 degree flexion. You are abducting the shoulder and externally rotating. You are one hand. Where is your other hand? Supporting the shoulder, sir. Not you are pressing onto the shoulder, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what happens? Sir, as we do the maneuver. You go externally rotate, you will resist it. So that is apprehension test, right? 
So then with the other hand, you are externally rotating, the patient will try, will hold, hold your hand so that they will not allow you to externally rotate, abduct and external rotate, that is apprehension. But you are with your other hand at that position, you will press the head down. What happens? Patient will be relieved of the symptoms, right? Then you try to take off your hand from the shoulder. Again, the patient will experience the pain. So it is like you are subluxating, you are relocating that area. So that is apprehension test. Apprehension test has got two things. One is you keep it in abduction, external rotation. The patient will hold. That time you press the head in uh, in, uh, inwards. The patient will get, get relieved. Then you take off your hand. The patient will again experience pain. What is horn plover sign? One of the exam exam going. There is no other. Today, so Shamma sir, somebody answer. Vivin, you are exam going? No sir. Okay, Vivin. Second year PNG, sir. You have already written your theory. No sir, uh, oh. going to write uh, my theory on December. Yeah, coming this. Okay. Surek, Surek or Shammas or Gautam, anybody answer? Shammas? Sir, it's the horn voice, just... And uh, no. Ah, sir. Yes. Sir, it's useful to assess that there is minor... Uh, we will uh, we will update the shoulder 90 degree and uh, elbow is flexed and uh, hands comes to the mouth. So, it means... Shoulder is... What happens to the shoulder? Shoulder is 90 degree updated. Abducted. Yes. Okay. Then. And elbow is flexed and hand comes to the mouth. So just like a blowing a horn. So if the patient's uh, service minor is uh, tear or uh, an injury happened. You, you just, you are abducting means you are like this. This is abduction. Yes, sir, shoulder is 90 degrees abducted. Abducted. That is what? This is abduction. 90 uh, degree abduction. Elbow is flexed. And hands comes to the uh, mouth. You cannot have. Then you have to turn oh, your head. Forward flexion. You, you have to turn your head. Uh, you abduct. Uh, this is abduction. Then I have to turn. So shoulder. What I have to do? You have to come like this. No. Flexion. Which movement is this? Is flexion. It abduction or something else? Forward flexion. This is forward flexion. Yeah. Then this one. So, so what happens? If the patient was able to maintain the position, then uh, the teres minor is intact. If the patient is uh, experiencing pain, not pain. It will, you hold. Ask him to hold like this. It will come down like that. So what happens? That means teres minor is uh, injury. Injury to the teres minor. Okay. Divya. See, see, uh, see the picture, no? Uh, the hand will go down. Hmm. So what, what does it signify? It shows the weakness of teres minor, chronicity of tear and fatty de degeneration. So if it is, there is a lot of fatty degeneration and there is it's a very chronic tear, then the hand will come down. Okay, next slide. Do I say? Uh, Identify the traction method. What is its indication? How will you manage a shaft of femur fracture in a neonate? So what is the traction method called? Full answer. Yeah. Gallows traction. What yeah, is it? Gallows traction. Gallows. Thank you. So what is the indication? In what age group do we? Two months to two years. Two months, two, two months to two years. Two, two years. Two After two years, what will you do? Tense leg. Oh, hip spiker. Two hip spiker. Right. Yeah, actually, this can be this uh, either this 
uh, vertical traction or longitudinal traction can also be used up to 4 years we can use it and after 4 years maybe you can think of uh, dense name elastic name but what is the treatment option in neonates shaft of human neonates hello 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 yeah. them yeah how will you manage shaft of human neonates hello them you can try the gallus traction gallus traction any other option gallus traction as uh, uh, somebody answered from 3 months to two months maybe to four, uh, two to four years maybe and uh, before that below 3 months what is option what happens if you put a gallows traction in a newborn see in that uh, picture it is nicely given see the arrow the buttocks has to get little bit elevated from the bed okay this is applying the traction generally it will work so what happens gaudam if you put a uh, gallows uh, traction in uh, um, neonate the point panel Uh, Anil, what happens? Uh, okay. What happens? What is the problem with the neonate? No? hip dislocation it hip it will not dislocate and then it will be... the skin mm -hmm. is very very you know thin so if you put a uh, this kind of attraction there will be peeling of the skin alle jo is a pediatric ortho there will be peeling of the skin because the skin in a neonate is very thin so you cannot apply that so what else what else will you do only carnes Yeah, yeah. Public hardness. Okay. How long will you have to play? Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. Two to three weeks. Okay. So can we go to the next question? Yes. Do we have another player? Watch the video carefully. Ah, uh, Divya. Divya, just enjoy it. Back, back, back. Uh. what is the gait shown what is the gait shown in this video and what are the condition causing this type of a gait jimshad ജിംഷാദിന് ശബ്ദ ഇല്ല ജിംഷാദ് ആർ യു 
അഖിൽ ജൂനിയർ ചന്ദ്രബാബു സാർ വുഡ് ഹാവ് നൈസ്ലി ഷോൺ ഇറ്റ് ഹൗ ഹി ഐ ഡോ നോ മച്ച് സോ ദർ വിൽ ബി എ ഡ്രോപ്പ് പ്ലസ് ലൈക് ദിസ് ദർ വിൽ ബി എ സ്വിങ് ആൻഡ് എ സ്വേ നോ ഓക്കേ വാട്ടർ ദ കണ്ടീഷൻ കോസിങ് ദിസ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഹീറ്റ് ഈ സീരിയൽ വീക്നസ് ഓഫ് ഹിപ്പ് അബ്ഡക്ടർ മസിൽസ് ഇൻ പർതീസ് വി കാൻ സീ വിച്ച് ഇപ്സിലേക്കൽ uh tilt downwards and in order to compensate that the uh, trunk will shift to the opposite side okay so one is abductor weakness or when there is a fulcrum weakness or when there is a muscle weakness so in this patient what what basically is he having this here explain to you this patient basically yeah see and just observe the patient once more so there is a drop of shoulder and this sway see this way swing and this way the shoulder is coming to the front like this plus the drop മോഹൻലാൽ നടക്കുന്നതിന്റെ കൂടെ ഒരു ഷോൾഡറിനൊരു സ്വിങ് ഇവിടെ ഉണ്ട് സോ എനിത്തിങ് വിച്ച് അഫക്ട്സ് ദ ഫൾക്രം ദ ലോഡ് ദ എഫേർട്ട് ഓർ ദ ലീവർ എവറിത്തിങ് ക്യാൻ കോസ് ദ ട്രെൻഡൽ ആൻഡ് ബർ ഗേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഫോർ ദിസ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എഫേർട്ട് വിച്ച് ഇസ് ഹാവിങ് ദ ഇഷ്യൂ Hope everyone is clear about the trend number gate. One gate video will be there for your exam. Okay, okay next one. ടെസ്റ്റ് 
test which is shown in the video. You have to explain the test, what is its use, and what are the conditions which you can cause positive test. Uh, the test on is the O'Brien's test, which is you uh, used to test the uh, contracture of iliotibial. O'Brien test or Ober's test? Be specific. Spelling. O B R I E N. O B R. Spelling. O-B-E-R. Okay, sorry. Mm. Uh, it is used for testing the contractures of iliotibial tract. Uh, in this test, ask the patient to uh, abduct the hip, uh, then uh, flex the knee, and external rotate the leg. Uh, and make, and may, uh, we, we have to hold the, stabilize the knee joint and external rotate the uh, leg, and uh, slowly release the uh, lower limb so that uh, in, norm, in normal patient it falls slowly but in contractures of iliotibia tract it will it remains sta it stays like that this test is positive in uh, uh, cerebral palsy uh, spastic type cerebral palsy then uh, then Okay, very good. Next slide. Mm -hmm. yes, See, it is not only really on tight, it can be seen in con tight, contracted or inflamed also. So if there is something there is any reason for the inflammation, it can get, there will be contraction no, of the tensor mm -hmm. facial lata area, and that can also produce this thing positive. Sir. You should know that also. Yeah. Another test coming your way. What is this test shown in the figure? What is the condition which the test is being done for? Name another test which is used for diagnosing this condition and what are the treatment modalities? Divya, we'll have this as the last question. No? Already 9.15. What is this test in the figure? Cosens. Cosens test. Cosens test. Cosens test. Okay. okay. What is this condition? Tell who is answering the question? Shamas. What is the condition for which this test is used? Person's test. Uh, tennis elbow. Tennis elbow. So we'll go through. Uh, who is there? Gautam, name other test used for diagnosing this condition. Registered finger extension of the middle. The? Registrance of the finger extension of the middle finger. Middle finger? So, Mills test. Okay. Explain what is Mills test. How will you do Mills test? An elbow in 90 degree. Uh, and uh, uh, hold the uh, examiner have to hold the hand hand and the fingers of the patient and ask the patient to uh, palmar flex the <laughs> joint and pronate the forearm against resistance and ask them to extend the elbow so the patient gets pain. Okay. What are the treatment again? Initially, conservative management.
with the rest then penicillin dubrase you can give uh, then local steroid injections what all things you will do so initially activity modification conservative management uh, okay what what treatment will you give you got a patient with the penicillin in the op how will you treat that patient? can give tennis elbow brace will the patient be happy for what the patient has come to you patient be having pain initially analgesics yeah so you have to give a analgesic what type of and you give a NS nsaid so that the inflammation is reduced mm. then what is the pathology the inflammation of the uh, common extensor origin Which muscle is commonly involved? Sensor carpal radialis muscle. Mm -hmm. ECRB, sensor carpal radialis. Sensor carpal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what what else will you give? You give NSAID, then you will give. Brace, brace, brace. We can use. Hmm. Brace or brace splint, whatever it is. Okay, mm. you give a tennis elbow splint. Mm. Then, uh, then if patient, uh, then we can do local in infiltration steroid. Oh, you, you don't have to wait. <laughs> What else you will give? You ask the patient to avoid things which cause the pronation, supination, and it is growing motions and also avoid lifting weight then what else will you give you can give you can send the patient to physiotherapy department you can give ultrasound therapy then uh, some people give uh, eswl treatment also for tennis elbow extra corporeal short wave therapy you no know, uh, for this thing then if not getting relief you give infiltration steroid infiltration what is the indication for surgical treatment so one more thing one important thing i forgot is any other joint pathology can produce tennis elbow radial joint doctor are shinasan are shamasan any other joint pathology so you send to physiotherapy department you do all this thing you ask them also to rehabilitate a particular group of muscle this is very common that one thing you have to know okay ankit can you tell can you send the patient to physiotherapy which group of muscles will you tell them to rehabilitate the weakness of a particular group of muscles in a joint can lead to tennis elbow it's very frequently seen okay muscles in the shoulder muscles the shoulder abductor weakness can produce for Increased, uh, you know, act, you know, uh, extensor activity can uh, lead to tennis elbow. So you have to always send for a shoulder rehabilitative program also for resistant tennis elbow. So you rehabilitate the shoulder muscles. Otherwise, they will be using more of your uh, elbow extensor. Then, what are the surgical indication for surgery? I mean, failed conservative management. Yes, but when? What are the uh, indicator? When will you say you have got a failed conservative management? What is the end point of conservative treatment? Six months. Now, uh, Johnson.
Then will you say your conservative treatment has failed? Six months. Yes, Shamas. After six months of conservative treatment. The patient is not, you give three shots of injections, therefore the patient is again coming back to you with pain. That is one indication. If the patient has told more than three months of conservative treatment with your thing and the patient is not having any relief of symptom, or the patient is not able to, you know, like all the normal thing, you have given all sorts of things, patient is not able to do his uh, activities of daily living then you have to go for a uh, surgical management so what are the surgical mm, treatment for tennis syndrome what will you do Okay, Shamas, how will you do arthroscopically? What will you do arthroscopically? What will you find? We'll stop with this case, huh? so that's why we'll discuss and finish at 10 o'clock. So, we'll do arthroscopy. What will you see? How will you identify? You have to, there will be. Inflammation of the ECRB muscle. Now, how will you identify the ECRB in the arthros? Once you put the scope, you can see the radial head and you can see the extensor origin coming in. So there will be reddening of that one particular area that is about somewhere in the middle and lower part of the uh, extensor muscle origin there. You will see reddened part. There will be, you know, inflammatory response. You can see there will be a lot of vascularity coming there. So there you have to release it. Either you can use a radio frequency ablator, and you can just release that area, or you can even use a eleven number knife and cut it. So that is the arthroscopic management. So open surgery. What will you do? Open surgery again, what you can do, you have to debride this area. So you, you can take off this extensor origin, debride that area and re reattach it. So by doing so, the vascularity to the extensor muscles are increased. So uh, you will have increased blood supply coming in to take care of the inflammatory response and the, your pain will reduce. So that is the open surgical uh, principle of open surgery. You try to increase the vascularity to them to that region. I think it is ten o'clock. We'll call it a day.